Welcome to another video, a walk on the wild side, and I really am in the wild in this video. I'm down here in Wales, Snowdonia, and I'm here in one of the valleys, the valleys, yes, of Wales. Yes, and the reason why I'm here is quite a special one. It's a pretty fast road, this. The A487 that cuts through this valley. Look at that view down there, folks. That's looking towards the lake down there. I am at CAD. Just look at this now, folks. Wow, look at that. Doesn't it look amazing? Deep in the valley here. So the reason I've come down here to Wales and to this particular location in Snowdonia is because it's where the military fly the low jets. You sometimes get them flying the low jets down this valley here and all around the others. You go around in like a circle and it's called the Mac Loop. Now this particular location where I am now, CAD, is probably the most popular of the different locations around the loop to go to. So I've come here and I thought I'd do a little video on it just to bring you a bit of the experience. If you've never been before, um, there's no guarantee that we'll see anything either. You know, the military don't let you know when they're going to be flying the planes for a particular area. <laughs> But the weather's looking pretty good today. It's the middle of the week. It's a Wednesday. We've had some pretty bad weather lately. And you don't tend to see a lot in bad weather. Not, like I say, we're not guaranteed to see anything, but there's a good chance of seeing some planes bombing it through here today. And it'd be pretty spectacular. We'll even possibly be above some of them. So you see this hill behind me, this is Cad West. And I'm gonna be making my way up there. And uh, it's not a hard, it's not, well, it's not a particularly hard climb. It's quite an intense climb. It takes around about 20, 20 to 25 minutes to get up there. Uh, we've already got some, some people here already. Can you see that? We've got a few people. It's about eight o'clock in the morning. It's just getting light now. And we've got to climb. Come on, get ready. There you are, that's me. We've got to climb up here. It takes about 20 minutes or so. And um, once we get up there, hopefully in position, we can then get a cracking view of the planes as they come down the valley, they come down this way from the north and they come bombing it down here. And some of them are really, really low, especially the American ones. The Americans like to go through really low. Yeah, and one of the reasons why this particular location, CAD, is popular because it's got a massive car park. You see, it's got quite a big sweeping car park here. Now, you can go up the other side, up there, if you want. It's a little bit more hardcore up there. That's Cad East. I've seen people right up there, yeah. I don't think that's for me. But anyway, this is where you go up here. Look, there's a little gate here where we go over. Yeah, you can tell we're in Wales now, look at that. Got Gaelic there. Please take your litter home. I also want to show you this as well. <laughs> look at this here. Look at that. I'm going to have to blur that out, otherwise someone's going to be in trouble, aren't they? Weed. Oh my goodness. I think someone's playing a trick there, aren't they? Anyway, I've got to head up there. Oh. Oh. Oh, I'm about to make the climb. Let's turn the camera around and show you. Right, here we go. Oh, here we go, folks. I'll try and give you a bit more information as a head up but uh, yep I'm heading up now oh I think I'm gonna have to stop a few times because it's quite a, a steep climb and I'm carrying a lot of equipment I'm carrying equipment for Franklin Blackpool because he's with me on this trip and uh, yeah so I'm carrying a bit of weight oh my goodness so like I said before, the planes tend to operate in the week, not at weekends. I don't know if that's exclusive. So military planes, RAF and the US Air Force. So what I'll do is I'll just put some pictures on the screen now, just to show you what I've got from here in the past. Really spectacular. Check these out. Oh, I'm out of breath already. Tornadoes, the Tornado GR4, and well, that was taken in 2013 from here. Uh, 
I even got one with the wing swept back as well. Look at that. Oh my goodness. I'm out of breath already, folks. Oh. Now, I did mention that this particular location is uh, probably the easiest one. And one of the reasons is the climb is quite gradual. As you can see, I'm walking along a thin track here. We've had a few people go up already. Okay, I just stopped for a bit of a, a bit of a breather. We're looking down there. It's a long, it's a long way down already. Looking down the valley there. Yeah, so where I'm going up here, Cad West, I would say, is the easiest in terms of parking. Plenty of parking, no problem at all. The next location I would probably consider after this one is the bulk, which is round uh, the corner, cross foxes. You turn at cross foxes, and um, that's another location where you can go. We arguably get better views or the lights better for for the planes, but you get less warning of them coming. Where we are now, you get a much longer warning of the planes coming because you see them coming right down the valley. Whereas at some of the other locations on the map loop, they can just come round the corner and they're on top of you before you even know it. So as you can see, we've got this gradient here that I'm walking up, now this path here. And it's, uh, it's not hard, but the thing is when I get to the end of here, we get to a fence. And once you get to the fence, that's when the climb gets a lot steeper. If you choose to go higher up, that is, because I would say that I'm about 100 feet up now, so I'm not doing too bad where I am, and you could possibly get a good view of them from here, but I want to go a bit higher up. But look at that view there, isn't it awesome? Wow, it's looking good already, isn't it? Oh, it's kicking off here on Cad West. Got a dog going mental behind us. Anyway, I've made it up to a turn. Can you see we've got a turn here? And that's where the climb gets really, really steep. If you look up there behind me, can you see we've got loads of people high up there. I want to get somewhere up there. So it's been pretty easy so far. A very gradual incline, but it's going to get a whole lot tougher now. It's just coming up to half past eight. And in fact, any time now, the planes could start coming through. So hopefully we'll see some. Hiya. <laughs> 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 yeah, so you can actually camp out here. Look, if you see, we're at the fence line now. Can you see we've got this fence line here? You can actually just come up to here and it's fairly easy. I mean, look over there, look, look at that view. That's where you get to see the planes coming. All the way along there. But I'm heading up this way. I'm going hardcore. Get away from that dog. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, it's a bit tougher now, folks. Look at this. Wow. Oh, I'll tell you what, this bit here is really, really tough because it's really steep now, but um, it's not going to take too long to get up there. I just need to keep stopping all the time. But the view down the valley, it's, a, it's an incredible view and you get a really long time, uh, a good warning of the aircraft coming when you're at this location. And if you don't know anything about planes or anything like that, there's usually someone here with a radio and they can give you a warning for when there's a plane coming so you can be ready. I'll also tell you how you can take pictures when they get to the top. Getting higher. It's now, what are we on? Half past eight. I've just been speaking to a couple down there who were from Cornwall and they said they came here on Monday. It's now Wednesday as I'm filming this, but it was too bad weather and they didn't see anything come down here on Monday. And they said they climbed up, up this one on the other side. I said, that's a hard climb. Now, it's not as hard as what I thought because there is actually a road that goes up this side, part of the way. So you don't have to climb all the way up this side, Cad East. What I'll do, I'll tell you what I'll do. Let's turn the camera around. I'm going to put a link to a website in the description. So if you're ever thinking of coming to the, the map loop, it'll give you some ideas of locations, how to get there, how to park, all that sort of stuff. So link will be in the description. If you need, if you need to know anything from me, from my experience, I've been coming here for about 10 years, 
the first time I came here was 2013 and yeah just let me know in the comments I can see two people right up there I'll tell you what that's about as high as you can get around here I think and if they come low level down here they'll be on top of them can you see that lake over there look look at that view well that's amazing I've just found a bit of a plateau here I've still got some way to go if I'm going to get with Frank because Frank he's hardcore him he's probably about 100 feet higher up than me I reckon I'm about maybe 200 to 250 feet up so far it's high enough in fact where I saw those people with the dog down there that was probably high enough for for most people if you come in here to the loop to see to, to see the planes to get close to them and here's a look the other way again we've got someone else coming up we've got a few people here now it's getting quite busy is that a good sign well I'm hoping so because this is going to be the best day of the week in terms of weather so we're all hoping that uh, they're going to use this opportunity to bring the jets down here low level up there and over that lake oh I'll tell you what we've actually got hailstones now a little flurry of hailstones not the first time I've had hailstones when I've been to the mat loop stuck up a mountain in a, in a hail shower not the best anyway I'll just turn the camera around and show you where I've got to go I've got to still get up here and somehow get over to those over up there they're not that far away but my goodness it's pretty steep here folks look at this let's have a look down here let's have a look at the view oh we're pretty high up now can you see the car park it's filling up I can see more people coming up now it's now about quarter to nine we haven't seen anything yet but uh, the weather's looking pretty good it's nice and clear and well I think we will get something I'm quite confident you know what I think I'm getting too old for this you know oh my goodness you can tell I'm a professional can't you look at me with my Tesco bag here <laughs> hill climbing <laughs> oh last bit can I make it well now look at this it's like a party up here on a Welsh hill I'm almost at the top folks oh Frank's fallen over oh dear you all right Frank oh he's all right he's used to it he's used to this Frank yeah so we're just up here folks where these people are here oh just about nine o'clock now by the way oh oh here we go folks Frank's even got like a little tent for us to shelter in look at this oh I tell you what I'm so relieved to get up here now uh, we're not at the highest point by the way you can actually go quite a bit higher up there's a tent up there on that ridge up there and I can see someone with a camera set up there I'll let you know about camera settings as well if you want to take pictures of planes you only need I would say a 200 millimeter you can get away with a 200 millimeter lens because the aircraft come really close here you know yeah you don't need a really long telephoto lens okay so this is where we are got that there's that tent up there and someone someone's got a camera set up there so someone's a little bit higher up but this is probably as high up as, as you need to be and remember what I said you don't have to come all the way up here where I made that turn and I saw those people with the dog it wasn't very high up but you still get a good view from there maybe not photographically but you get a great view of the planes as they zip through the valley so if I wanted to go higher up I can go over this style here but uh, you know what I'm going to stay right here we're going to stay here until sunset and hopefully we'll see some action right okay so it's around about quarter past now we've not seen anything yet but we live in hope anyway I just want to show you down here I've got some cameras down here now this is my 
old camera, should I say old camera, it's not really that old, it's a Nikon D850 with a 70 to 200 millimeter lens. So it does look quite a big lens that, but it's only a 200 millimeter lens. It's, it's, it's an f2.8, it's a professional lens, not particularly long in focal length, and that's really all you need. Now I also have the choice of using this camera as well, which Frank's given me, that's a Panasonic G9. It has a a 100 to 400 millimeter Leica lens on it. Very, very nice lens. So I've got the choice of two cameras, but what I want to do is I want to show you how I would set this camera up to take pictures of the planes because I know this camera the best. Right, okay, Frank's holding my camera there, the Nikon D850 with the 70 to 200, and he's also holding a 35 to 100, which is the equivalent of that lens on a micro four thirds camera. So if you've got a micro four thirds camera, this lens will do exactly the same as that one. Well, that's a lot smaller, isn't it? Look at that, wow. Well, the sun's coming out now, yes. It's looking pretty good. It's shining right on my face now across the valley, yeah. So I'm gonna be using, hopefully, I'm mostly be using this camera because I'm more used to using this camera than I am. Um, I've got a Panasonic myself. I've got a Panasonic, it's a Panasonic Lumix. And I've also got one myself, but uh, I'm more used to shooting sort of uh, action with uh, this camera here. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set it up to shoot at maybe about a thousandth of a second and make sure the shutter speed's no slower than a thousandth of a second. Now the thing about shooting planes is is that um, what you want to do is if you, if you pan, you want to pan the plane, you want to follow the plane as it comes through the valley. And uh, what you want to do is you want to see if you can get a little bit of blur going on as it's traveling through the valley as you're panning. Now you can if you're if you're quite good with a camera and you're quite good at panning motorsports all that sort of thing you might want to use a slower shutter speed um, i'm just playing it safe with a thousandth of a second um, so what i'll probably do is when we start shooting the planes if they come through that is i mean we're not so sure if anything's going to come through yet but we'll start off with a fairly fast shutter speed and and if they come through again, we can dial the shutter speed down and then see if we can get a little bit more blur on the background. That's what we want. We want some blur as the planes are coming to give that sense of speed. Well, everyone's getting to know each other up here on the hill. And uh, Frank's in his element because Frank's a bit of a mountaineer, Frank in Blackpool. Yeah, so he's speaking some, to some of these hardcore guys over here. Anyway, um, what I wanted to say was, we're just coming up to 10 o'clock, by the way, and we haven't seen anything yet. There's no sign. The radio's going because someone's got a, a radio there tuned to the, the military. And uh, I just want to say that uh, if we don't manage to see anything today, at least we've had a day out. And I just want to turn the camera around and show you this view because this view is amazing. Look at this, folks. Just look at that view there. We're not guaranteed to see anything. But, what a view. And I tell you what, there's a few, quite a few people turning up now. There's people turning up all the time. Look at this. Yeah, so I'm going to be using this camera here, Nikon D850, with a 70 to 200 millimeter f 2.8 lens. It looks a bit of a beast, folks, but it's only up to 200 millimeters. It's not a really long focal length, but it's about all you need if you come in here to the mat loop. Now you can go more, you can go up to 400, say you might have a 100 to 400 or something like that. If you've got a zoom lens, it gives you a few more options. The problem is if you've got too long a lens and it's a fixed lens, it could be too long, something like a 400 to 500, a fixed lens. Not many people tend to use fixed lenses now, only like the professionals, but if you've got a zoom lens that goes say from 100 up to about 400 you're all set that's all you need here at the mat loop now i might have mentioned before as well we want to see if we can get a bit of movement in the planes as they go past so what you need to do is you need to see if you can set your shutter speed to a certain speed that's going to give a bit of movement as you pan what we want to do is we want to pan the aircraft like that as they come here through the valley we want to pan like that and we want to try and use a shutter speed that will give a sense of speed as they go through. So I'm going to start off with something like a thousandth of a second if they come through. And then if they come round again, I might try going a bit slower. The slower your shutter speed, the more blur you'll get behind the aircraft as it goes through the valley. And also if you get prop aircraft as well, like a helicopter or something with propellers, 
you really ideally want to try and blur those propellers so that means you have to use an even slower shutter speed which means it can be quite tricky to photograph propeller aircraft such as helicopters and that sort of thing maybe a c-130 hercules and get that blur on the propellers that's quite difficult to do okay it's around about 11 o'clock now in the morning and i've been up here around about two hours and uh, there's quite a few people come up here now we haven't had anything yet there's been no sign of anything although there has been a bit of uh, action on the radio um, somewhere fairly nearby but just not down this uh, particular valley possibly high up um, but that's it you see that you've got to play the waiting game when you come here um, you could come here in the morning you could not see anything we could not see anything this morning and then come this afternoon we could see loads of action this afternoon or it could be the other way around or you might see nothing at all but if you don't try you don't get you've got to be in it to win it so i'm sat here in a beach tent at the moment some it might be worth bringing something like this if you've got it you know just to keep the wind off saying that it's not that windy today but yeah um a little bit bored at the moment but there you go you see um it's a waiting game and you never know when something's going to come and when it does I'm going to be out of here like a shot. Yeah, it's going to be really, really exciting. There'll probably be loads of people shouting that there's a plane coming and we get plenty of warning, hopefully, if something comes. So there you go. We'll keep waiting and hopefully we'll see something. Oh, this is exciting, folks. We've got something. Look. Oh, look at this. Everyone's getting excited. Something's coming. I don't know what it is, but something's coming. <laughs> I believe that was a bit of a false alarm so I think it's gone the other way there was something uh, there was something out there in the distance but I think it's gone around the other valley or something like that so but it might come around this way so we'll keep waiting shall we yes yeah, so I was getting quite excited there for a, a minute it's actually got the uh, the heart going a little bit there you know <laughs> that was really exciting that we thought we were going to see something didn't we yeah uh, but uh, anyway, um, it's something, it could be a sign that something could be about to come through here. Can you hear that? Oh, look at that, we've got something, folks. Here it is. There you go. a prop but it was something we got something folks well there you go we had a plane there um not sure at the moment what sort of plane that was it was a little sort of trainer prop plane that they used so that was all right wasn't it a bit of a warm-up it's around about a quarter to 12 so we've had something come through in the morning which is good now the thing is is that uh, we've got the sun over there the sun's really getting up now and in fact if we do get more passes in the afternoon that's probably going to be better because the light is better on this side of the the valley in the afternoon so that will be good so hopefully we'll get some more action in the afternoon but that was good we've got something folks it's not going to be a blank someone's just told me that it was a, a texan or a texas t6 trainer aircraft that there now when I took pictures of that, I wasn't actually set up for a propeller aircraft. I have my shutter speed on 1-800, which is a little bit fast. And what you really want to try and do, if you're photographing propeller planes, you want to try and get the blur of the props. So unfortunately my shutter speed was a little bit too fast, but uh, hopefully if it comes round again, I'll try one at a slower shutter speed and we'll see if we can get the prop blur. nice cup of tea can't beat it can you they just heard on the radio about a wildcat helicopter a few lads here have got radios so they're following the the action they can get a heads up on what's coming through um not sure if that's coming through here or whether it's just going to go along the beach at uh, north wales because we've got raf valley over there and sometimes they get them going around there but they don't come into the loop so 
you never know it could do you, you can get all sorts of craft here on the matlow you get a patch well i don't know about apaches but get hercules transporter planes a400s get the f-15s of course we get the new f-35s as well we get them barreling through here so you get all kinds of aircraft um, i think i saw a, a merlin an RAF merlin once i got a photograph of that once coming through here so you get all types of aircraft uh, so who knows what we might see this afternoon and uh, the sky's clearing more it's uh, it's looking pretty good actually yeah i might even take this coat off in a minute you know i remember bringing my friend here chris uh, chris who appeared with me in the land Dudno video last year that's chris i brought him down here to the mat loop and it was similar time of year yeah and the weather was bad we had no shelter we didn't have any of these tent things that these people have got we had no shelter we were exposed and at the bulk down there and we had a blank morning nothing was going on got to about one o'clock in the afternoon and all hell broke loose with f-15s come flying through and oh my goodness and they went through again and then again they went through three times i think there was um two or three of them at a time yeah so it absolutely made our day you know after after enduring some terrible weather in the morning we got to see some amazing uh, site so that was good yeah so yeah so at least one thing today we've seen some action and we haven't had a blank because you never know you know um you can come here and not see anything and you know they don't tell you when they're going to fly you've really just got to take a chance if you don't take a chance uh, well you don't get to see anything do you oh look at this is it a police helicopter or something I didn't have my camera ready, so uh, I'm filming this with my phone. There you go, look at that there. Wow. Bit of excitement for us. Woke us up. <laughs> Check this out, we've got a sun halo now. Look at that there. That's almost a full circle around the sun not sure if you can see but there's like a sun dog there and a sun dog at the other side you always get them 22 degrees away from the sun yeah it's amazing. they're actually quite common sun halos you know yeah but uh, it's another spectacular sight to see up here in the middle of wales well it's just after one o'clock folks and we've had a call that a hawk is going to come through uh, so we've got a jet not a big jet but it's a jet and uh, we'll see how this looks, shall we? Everyone's getting ready, look. Here it comes. Here it comes. Look at this. Look at that, folks. There you go. We got a fast jet. It was a hawk. It wasn't one of the really big boys, but it was a fast jet, wasn't it? I wonder how I got that. What, how was my picture? We'll have to check it out. I think I did pretty well with that, folks. What do you think? Look at this shot here. Got a, um, two or three good shots of the hawk there. I was using one eight hundredth of a second shutter speed on that. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to dial the shutter speed down a little bit. Oh, it's gone out. Are they coming this way? I think they are coming this way. I'm going to use a slower shutter speed for these this time. There's two of them coming together. Got there in the end. Well, we had a bit more action there, didn't we, folks? Um, two of them this time, yeah. Now, what I did this time is I lowered the shutter speed down to, let's check, I went down to 1 250th of a second. So this time we got a little bit more blur on the props. I'll just show you the pictures now. Check this out. How did I do? Not too bad. 
like I say, the, the slower the shutter speed means that you get the blur on the props. But the only thing is, there's more chance of getting shaky, blurry shots, you know, because of the low shutter speed. Um, I'm using a 200mm lens, so really the slowest shutter speed that I would reasonably go down to is probably about 1 200th, matching up with the lens, 1 200th of a second shutter speed. 200 millimeter lens if you had a 400 millimeter lens you would probably go down to 1 400 um shutter speed so that's how you match the shutter speed to the lens that's how i normally gauge how slow i'd go for photographing air aircraft but everyone's different you know we all have our little tricks but that's something to go off um if you if you ever come down here and you you know a little bit of a tip for you Right, okay, it's just past half past three and um, we're probably thinking now that the light is starting to fade a little bit that we might have seen all we're going to see today. Um, you never know, something else could come through yet but I don't think we've done too bad, we've had something. It's not been a blank because you can come here sometimes and not see anything at all and we've had four aircraft, we had uh, the Texan prop plane and then we had the Hawk jet bombing it through so we had we had the, we had a jet we had a fast jet in the hope but we didn't get the big boys unfortunately like the it would have been nice to get like a typhoon or an f-35 or something like that but it doesn't look like we're gonna get anything but you never know well hang on yet something might come along yet anyway i hope i've given you a good idea about the mac loop and if you ever want to come down you've got a bit more of a sort of um you know a bit more idea of where to go and how easy it is to get up here and i've also given you an idea of how to take pictures of the planes as well because we've got some good pictures today as well and there you go i'll put some information in the description if you want to find out a bit more about the map loop on the website and uh, if you like this video hit the like button and also hit subscribe and tick the bell for notifications of new videos and i'll see you again on the next one